Ah, the Nintendo Entertainment System. With just a little bit of a slide, a click, and a close, this started off many people's childhoods, ranging from Mario, The Legend of Zelda, all the way to the Kirby games. It is a long journey that it's made all the way to the Nintendo Switch, but I'm going to show you how I turned this, with a little bit of power, a little bit of know-how, into a shrunk-down version. So, stay tuned. Right here is one of the many business cards I've collected throughout my travels. Right here, for a size comparison, is a 1.4 GHz quad-core computer that runs a multitude of different operating systems that are Linux-based. It can run a retro operating system called, I believe, uh, RetroArch, or it is also commonly known as Emulation Station. And basically what that is, is an operating system that goes onto an SD card and then loads into the bottom slot right here. So I'm going to show you how I go from this tiny card-shaped computer to putting it in something that looks just like a Nintendo Entertainment System. Therefore shrinking down an older console and making it something more modern. Let's do this. So the first thing we need to do is take this out of its nice pretty little box that it came in and then slide this baby out and put that to the side. So this is a really nice case and uh, I picked this one specifically because some of the ones had the colors mismatched. If you look at the side it has a bunch of different openings for the uh, things to go into. That's the HDMI, the audio, and the micro USB. And back here it even has a place for the SD card and a place for the LEDs to show up. So that's really nice. Not to mention uh, ventilation. So if we take this apart right here, set that down, you can see that it comes with a nice little tool kit, which is nice because I don't know where my iFixit kit is. Looks as though there's some screws here at the bottom and then a nice little screwdriver that we can use. Let's go ahead and open this up. And I'll take the screwdriver out and then get something to set these on top of. Let's see what I have around my desk. Let's just use the box right here and we'll just slide these out. We have a bunch of little screws right here. It looks like some of these have a little lip on them, so I'm assuming those are used for something different. But let's go ahead and put this here and grab the Raspberry Pi. So it has four screws right here, and it looks as though it needs to lay down into this little section. So let's see how well it fits. That's nice. As you can see, it uh, falls in there pretty nicely. All right, so now that we have that in there, we need to go ahead and attach this portion right here. It came with a heat sink on a more expensive version, but I opted out on it. Hopefully there's enough ventilation. So let's go ahead and adjust the flap and then set it down on top of here. That's satisfying. Closes up pretty well. Adjust the little flap and it clips on. And then I believe from the bottom, yeah, you can see the motherboard kind of cool. We're actually going to put the screws in right here so that we can attach everything together. Yeah, a tiny bit of flex, but it's pretty much all in there now. And if you open this little latch right here, which actually clips in, you get the full USBs right here. Really cool thing about the Raspberry Pi is if you want to load retro games onto a USB, you can actually load them off from right here. You just grab a USB, slide it in, and then load up your games. It also has Ethernet as well if you want a fast connection for, say, if you want to put it by your TV and install a uh, version, I believe, of Moonlight. You can stream your PC games to your PC with low latency, which is kind of nice, kind of like a Steam Link. But let's go ahead and close that up. I already have an operating system loaded, I believe, on this 64 gigabyte Samsung Evo. So I'm going to go ahead and load this in here and then boot up some games. Since we've already kind of shrunk down this guy and showed you how simple it was to go from the original to something that can do the same thing. Let's see what we can do with this. And now with a little bit of software tinkering and getting Super Mario Bros. 3 on here, we're just going to go ahead and plug in the HDMI 
and then we're also going to plug in the micro USB that is used to power it on, which is only 5 volts by the way. As you can see, it's starting to boot up. It starts up and says RetroPie. You can actually customize the loading screen if you wanted to. I've seen people do it before. I'm not sure how to do it myself though. As it says, Emulation Station. And now it says no gamepad detected. I have a PlayStation 4 controller plugged in with a micro USB right here. And all we have to do is unlatch this and plug it into one of the mini USBs. Hold down a button, and it is now working. Then we can go over to the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, and then click on Super Mario Brothers 3. That'll give a little message about the emulator. And just like that, you have a console that is actually smaller than the size of the original cartridge. It's really amazing how technology has progressed throughout the years and that you can pretty much do whatever you want now with your uh, <laughs> older games. You can run them on a credit card sized computer and everything. Let's see if we can get a little bit of uh, gameplay going on in here. As you see I can move around and everything and start the level. Everything runs super smooth and I can uh, pretty much play it just like I would, except this time we're doing it in high definition. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, what do you guys think? I think this is probably one of the most advanced things that I've ever done, besides the Game Boy one, where I kind of redid the shell on an old Game Boy Advanced. But uh, yeah, I want to do more videos like this in the future, and I really think that uh, technology is one of my specialties. But yeah, Super Mario Bros. 3 shrinking down a Nintendo Entertainment System. A huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are awesome. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Feel free to check out my Patreon. I have a multitude of different tiers that can help support the channel, buy interesting stuff like this, and keep me going. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.